What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's going on with the overall market. I'm going to be talking about some very important levels to be watching for on Tesla Spy and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to be breaking down how on earth tomorrow could go after the big news that just came out. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. It's not for instance just three days from now, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the markets. The market pumped really hard on Friday despite what Jerome Powell said, despite the bad news that came out on Thursday. There was also bad news on Friday involving the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, and yet the market continued to pump. When the market pumped, we ended up closing, and then right after close, we got some very, very strong closes for the markets. And then this bad news came out, and Moody cut the U.S. outlook to negative. This could have been a big trap for investors as the market started to sink during the after hours. But the question is, how will this affect the market? Now, this news is important because there's a risk, risk to the U.S. credit ratings. And this could have a big effect on global investor sentiment. However, I do want to note that the overall, and this is something I didn't really talk as much about, the credit rating is still the same. We're just going to see risks for it. And this is going to have a big effect on you know, the sentiment and the outlook as time goes on. Now, this also has to do with something that's very political and other things that are going on. But the honest truth is I spoke with many big investors, many big you know, well-known traders, uh, with you know decades of experience, people have been doing this for like forty plus years, and they have very mixed views, right? They have very mixed views. Some think the market's going to pop a little higher before we get a rejection. Others are saying that the market's going to just sink from here. And honestly, guys, at this point, it doesn't make sense to pretend we know what's going to happen. That's my honest view. Okay. The best thing I could do is just be very unbiased. And I know that I typically give you guys predictions. In this video, I'm going to give you two predictions for each of the different tickers. And it's going to be based off the different contingencies from tomorrow. All right. So I know this is not what a lot of you guys want. I'm not going to do this forever just for this video specifically because the situation and the circum circumstances are very, very uh, different from usual. And that's why I'm going to be very unbiased when giving you guys an analysis about this. So for tomorrow... We have Cook from the Fed giving a speech. At 11 o'clock a.m., we have consumer inflationary expectations, the three- and six-month bill auctions as well at 11.30. And that's pretty much it for data. There's not much data coming out. But you can't forget that on Tuesday, which is going to be in a couple of days, we have CPI coming out before the market opens. That's going to cause an even bigger move. And this could invalidate anything from Monday. If the market tries to pop on Monday, we could still tank on Tuesday after CPI comes out. If we, you know, drop really, really hard on Monday, we can still bounce on Tuesday, right? So anything could happen depending on CPI. That's why you want to be very unbiased. And we're not going to focus on Tuesday. We're just going to focus on Monday for now. Now, we have very mixed signals as market volatility is becoming more neutral. And some indicators are fearful. Others are more like on the greedy side, like market momentum. The fear and greed index is quite fearful. So what do I see happening to the market? The answer is, guys, I'm going to be very unbiased. I think the market's going to gap down most likely, and we're going to be watching this test on SPY, Tesla, and these different tickers. Now, SPY could test the 438s again, and we're going to be watching to see if buyers step in to defend it, because this could always be another trap from the market makers. You see... The technicals look a little bullish technically. We could see, you know, spy push higher thanks to that, but we also have a bearish divergence developing on the chart that suggests that there could be downside in the future too. Now, the bearish divergence was never invalidated, right? It looked like it was about to play out here, but it ended up not playing out fully. And the market went higher on Friday, but it never invalidated because the RSI continued to decline. We're still on a downtrend on the RSI, which means. This suggests that the market could either pop a little bit more and then reject later on on Tuesday or Wednesday, or the market could just reject from here and start sinking. For that reason, the technicals are just kind of mixed, and I think that the best thing to do is just be very unbiased. The daily on SPY is bullish, so this is the reason why I think that we're just going to be watching these resistance and support levels. When SPY gaps down and comes down to 438, if we lose 438, expect this thing to start coming down closer to the 436s, in my opinion, back down to this demand zone. There's a good chance of more downside if we lose 438. But if we test the 438s and bounce, we could fill this gap 
Then we're going to be watching for a retest of 441. We have this historical white trend line acting as resistance. If we break it, if we manage to get above this, there could be one more push before CPI. If we break it, we're going to head all the way up to 444 on SPY, and that could be where this thing tries to see tight resistance. Okay, so if we break the 441s and the tight resistance at where the trend line is, watch for 444. If we fail to do so and we reject, we could see this thing end up coming back down to 438. If we lose that, it's going to start sinking lower. I wish I knew what was going to happen, guys, but the best thing I could do is tell you that I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to pretend I know, and nobody truly knows. Not even the best traders in the world, not even the best investors, unless they're like they have insider information or et cetera. But my point is the majority of people don't know. The majority of investors don't truly know. So we're not going to pretend we know. We're just going to wait and see how this news affects us. And we're going to be watching these key levels. I've heard very, very good arguments for both sides. that They're both very compelling. And that's the reason why I think it's very important to just be unbiased and just wait and see just to be safe. Uh, taking away bias could be very helpful. And this is one of those days where it has to happen. For Tesla, it's going to likely gap down. We're, we're going to be watching this 212 area. If Tesla loses 212, anticipate it's going to come back down to 209. And then we could see Tesla sink right before CPI. If Tesla manages to break above the 216s, you're going to be watching 216.8 as resistance. If we break 216 plus, I think Tesla is going to launch to 220, which is where we have this imbalance up here. All right. So we're going to be watching. Can Tesla break 216? If so, we, we turn bullish or do we break below 212? If we do so, we're bearish. It all depends on the test. That's why tomorrow is going to be very important. And I think it's very important to be unbiased at least going into tomorrow. For Apple, there are two possibilities. Now, we have some tight resistance up here at 188. When this thing gaps down, we're going to be watching 186.6. If we manage to break above that, watch for this thing to get very close to 187.5 to 188, then reject. And there could be a move to the upside if we end up getting that. If Apple gaps down and then loses 185, that's when you turn bearish. It's going to be sinking down to 184, 183.5, and lower levels like that. If you lose 185 tomorrow, I'm bearish. If we manage to break 187, I'm bullish, and I think 188 plus is coming, and that's going to drag the market up with it. On the QQQ, we're going to be watching our resistance at 378. Okay, we're going to likely gap down. Look for the gap down. We could even get a back test of this trend line. We have this white trend line right here acting as support now. If we back test. This support right here at very close to 376. Uh, if we bounce off of this, right, if we come down like this and kind of like bounce off this 376 zone, QQQ could bounce and start pushing up for 380 to form a potential top up here. And as long as we do that, there's a possibility that this bearish divergence could remain, which suggests that there's going to be a risk of downside in the future. The bearish divergence never was invalidated. It's still valid. There's no sign of it being invalidated yet. But the four-hour MACD is turning a bit bullish, so it's very mixed. If we kind of come down and get a back test of like the 376 area, then bounce, we could push for 380 one more time to form a top. Then we're going to be watching what happens after CPI. If we reject or if we fail to break this trend line, if we don't like bounce and we just like end up continuing to come down, then there's going to be a risk of it coming down to 375, 374. And then this imbalance down here is going to likely pull out 372. So if we lose the trend line, if the white trend line near 375 breaks, we're going to sink down to 372. If we bounce off, of, if we bounce off of it, excuse me, we could try to push up towards 378, then maybe even 380 above that. For Nvidia, we're going to be watching support at 4 uh, 480 for now. If we reject on 480 and we just continue to fail, Nvidia is going to come down to 475 quite easily. If we test 480 after we gap down and drop, there's going to be a small drop in the morning. But we'll see if we bounce because if the buyers step in again, just like how they did on uh, Friday, we could get one more push for this 488 to 490 area. That's some historical resistance from the past, and that's going to have a big effect on us. The technicals on NVIDIA technically are bullish. We got a nice green close. We're still holding up nicely, but there is a bearish divergence developing. The keyword is developing. It's still in the process of developing, which means that NVIDIA could pop a little bit more and then drop or drop from here. Very mixed technicals. Watch that 480 test. Do we end up holding it and then bounce off of it, or do we end up rejecting and sinking even lower? We're going to be watching that very carefully going into tomorrow, so make sure you watch these levels. 
All right, guys, that's it for the main five. Now I just want to focus on just a couple of others very briefly. Let's see what the IWM is doing. Russell 2000, if we lose 168, watch it come down to 166. If we bounce off 168, watch for a push up to 170. If we break that, 172 is coming. So what do I think it's going to do? It's going to decline for 168, and we're going to be watching to see if it bounces or not. So watch for that test on the IWM. It still looks, it looks a bit bearish on the four hours, so there's no confirmation of a bounce yet. I think Microsoft either pushes to about 372 to 375 and then rejects, or it kind of rejects from here. It's got to be one of those two. We have a bearish divergence developing. It might backtest 366, uh, or it pushes a little higher towards three, 375, and then we get the rejection. I'm going to be watching it carefully, but I see a rejection coming on the chart. It looks a little bit overbought, and I think it's due for that. So it pops a bit more and rejects, or it rejects from here most likely. For AMD, we have a bearish divergence developing. It could push for 122.5 to 125 and then reject or reject from here off this resistance. We're going to be watching to see how the new news affects it. I think it might retrace towards 118, so watch and see if it breaks. If we lose 118 to 117.5, watch it come down to 114. If it bounces, there could be one more push coming before this thing forms a top. The VIX has a bullish divergence, which suggests that it's going to bounce soon, but we're not ready just yet. We're going to be watching to see if we get one more red day on the VIX. Does the market pop a little bit more before we get the rejection, or is the VIX about to bounce from here? That I'm not 100% sure about. The VIX looks like it's going to bounce soon. It could drop a little bit more for the time being, but it's going to bounce in the future, hopefully not too long from now. Now we have this support in this 12.7 area. Could the VIX come down to 12.7 then bounce or is it going to bounce from here? It's got to be one of those two. So watch and see if 14 holds. The SQQQ looks bearish for the time being, but we have a bullish divergence developing. We're going to be watching to see if it comes down to this low right here. Do we see this thing just continue to sink down towards that 17 area? We have some strong support there and then at 16.5. Uh, if we lose 17, watch 16.5, then a bounce, but it could drop a little bit more before this thing continues to move. For Coinbase, it looks like this thing might cool off a bit. We could be looking for a test of 90, and if we lose 90, anticipate it's going to come down towards 88. So I think there's going to be some downside coming to that. For Google, it either pops towards 136 and rejects towards 132 or it projects from here and retests 132. I think that Google has some downside coming with a you know bearish divergence developing could pop a bit then drop or drop from here. We're going to be watching this very carefully. On Amazon we have a bearish divergence. I think 145 is going to be tested or a rejection or it just rejects from here. So either a pop and drop or a drop from here all the way down to 141 is the most likely possibility. Meta is the same thing we're at resistance near the very low 330s you can see right here at 330.6 it rejected i think that it either pops a little bit more towards this 330.6 area than rejects or it rejects from here to 325 so guys i apologize i know this was not the most in-depth video i can't give you guys just like one side for most of these tickers i know for a lot of them i was just trying to be unbiased well in my opinion for tomorrow it's the epitome of a day where you have to be unbiased because we don't know if the market is going to push higher or if this news is actually going to cause a big sell-off so we're just going to be watching support if it holds and we're just going to be unbiased going into tomorrow. That's the best way I could do it. I know it's annoying. I know it's not what you want to hear. And I'm going to continue to give you guys my best predictions for like one side, uh, at least in the future. But for now, I just think that this is very applicable. And this is one of those days where I have to do this. So thank you for listening. Please have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one moving forward. Thanks again, guys. Tesla in the market to the moon because the long term is very bright. Anyways, and peace out.